Great. We are live here on Facebook. We're live here on the Crowdcast app. And uh, we are going to get started. Welcome. My name is Joe Stout, and uh, I am the president here at Mount Capra. And uh, if you're seeing this video, it's probably because you have some kind of connection uh, one way or another with um, the, the goat milk formula recipe. This is a formula that I created about 10 years ago when our third child, uh, Liesl, um, was just really struggling on uh, cow milk formulas. Uh, at the time, we couldn't we couldn't nurse, and so she needed formula. Uh, but the, the the formulas that were available for her were were not a, excellent. And so uh, I put to, I put to use my um, uh, my background in nutrition. I have a bachelor's of science and a master's of science in nutrition. I put those to work, created this goat milk formula, and since then, um, the formula has impacted thousands of families in a very very positive way. Uh, we give uh, we are very thankful to God for His his blessing to many, many families on that. And one of the families you're going to meet that have been affected uh, in a very positive way by this formula uh, is the Friels family. And I'm going to bring them on in just one minute here, but the uh, the Friels family are an amazing family. I'll let them tell their story. Many of you probably have even already heard of them because they are uh, a well-known family. But uh, the goat milk formula has definitely played a role in their life. And we will talk about that some, but we're going to get to know this family and uh, just find out what life is like um, uh, parenting multiples. And multiples is an understatement, although it is true. So let me bring on the Friels here. Let me make sure this is working. Welcome, Graham and Stephanie. Thank you guys for being here with us. Um, so glad you guys could join us. And uh, we're excited to just... Uh, to learn more about uh, your incredible story. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. We're excited. <laughs> yeah. This is this is going to be great. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, and kind of turn the story over to you guys. If you guys wouldn't mind uh, just giving everybody who's watching, uh, there's going to be some people on the live stream. There's probably going to be a lot more people that watch this just kind of down the road. Um, but, but if you wouldn't mind just giving people, um, you know, where are, who are you uh, and how did you get here? Do you, do yeah, you start I'll start. So, yeah, we're Graham and Stephanie, and um, we've been married for, and May will be well, seven years. Be married seven years, and um, we had, or Stephanie had a quintuplets in June this past year, June of 2023, mm -hmm. and um, we struggle with infertility for. I don't even know how long, but yeah, we, I we, had a pituitary <clears throat> tumor that uh, eventually got removed and that had some complications and stuff. And so then I had to do uh, fertility treatments and yeah, last year we found out we were having five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's been crazy, but a lot of fun. Yeah. That's awesome. Wonderful. Well, hang on here. Okay. So that's, uh, I was, I'm glad, I'm glad Stephanie that you said five, because when you said quintuplets, Graham, I was like, does everyone know that means five babies <laughs> no. all at once? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. uh, don't actually know the, what I had never even really heard that word until we were having five. So we had someone say quintuplets one time. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. That would be like what? 15, 15 kids. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> too many, uh, way too many. That's great. And now, um, uh, whenever there's a situation with multiples, um, uh, very, very rare, uh, you know, even just twins, very rare for the gestation to go all to full to full term. Uh, I know you guys did not did not make it quite as long as you were hoping. Uh, when when did Stephanie? When did you have these babies? And then um, what was what was postpartum like for those for the little ones? So the goal was thirty four weeks. And I made it to 27 weeks in two days. Um, and they did so good. Um, mm. I, we had so many doctors and nurses in the, just in the NICU constantly saying, like, mm. these are some really healthy babies and they're doing so good. Not just for being early, but also for being a high, or, high order multiple. Um, so, yeah, they we only really had a couple bumps, I feel like, in the NICU. Nothing, like, crazy scary. There was one time when um, they thought, one of our daughters had sepsis, but they didn't, it didn't end up being that. And she got through it like a champ. And yeah, it, I don't even think they found out what it was, but um, that was pretty much the only, I feel like crazy thing that happened in the NICU. Yeah, it was 
uneventful, which yeah, is a good thing in the yeah. in the NICU. Um, can can the NICU know. really be uneventful? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone there was amazing. Um, all the doctors, all the nurses. Um, they even have volunteers that literally come and walk through and pray for mm. your children, which That's is really cool. cool. That's and um, yeah, we were blown away. So we didn't hit the goal of <laughs> 34 weeks, but um, so they came a lot earlier than expected, which was scary. But really, I always kind of describe it as they seem to have come at the perfect time yeah. because mm -hmm. they were all very healthy weights. Yeah. Um, and then Stephanie didn't carry them so long that I feel like your recovery has been yeah. um, a lot easier than what we were originally thinking it was expecting. Yeah. Um, so it all, I mean, it's a, a perfect example of God's time and it can be a lot different than mm -hmm. what you want. Yeah. And, uh, but it's worked out great. Yeah. Yeah. I think also the, um, I think after they were born and we were kind of like nervous, but then kind of were feeling better because they were doing so well was, I, I think I had looked up like, uh, gestational ages of when they're born premature and kind of the issues that can arise. And there wasn't a huge difference between like 27 and 28. And I think we would have felt better if it was 28, mm. but just to like, see, like, I think once they hit the 27 weeks, it's like, they have like a 95% chance of not having issues. And just like that, I read that and I was like, wow, God's timing is yeah. amazing. And just like, just so cool. Like all of it working mm -hmm. together and just, yeah, it's been pretty wild. Pretty cool. They were very tired. They were, they were, um, I, I watched your Christmas letter that you posted mm -hmm. on YouTube. And did you say that they were, they were each like about two pounds? Huh? Yeah, they were two of them were two, two, three, two, two. And then one was two, five. That That's yeah. amazing for 27 weeks, uh, yeah. isn't it? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, especially for how many there were. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure we'll get into it more, but basically our doctor, the first phone call he had, with us, he said, um, he, he told Stephanie her, her order was to have as many calories as she possibly could. So for about 27 weeks, she hated me because I fed her <laughs> <laughs> a lot of calories. And I think that was part of the reason why they mm. came out such weights. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a whole new uh, job description, right? Okay. My job today is to eat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Uh, Wow, that's amazing! And so they were born at 27 weeks in two days. Um, they're averaging everybody's post two pounds, um, but that is, but that, and that's all good news. But that 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 still is going to require a pretty lengthy NICU stay. How long were you guys in the NICU? Um, I believe the first one came out with like 64 days, and the last one I think was 76 days. Okay. So still, they came like home before their like full term date which is pretty was is pretty wild actually yeah. so right now you mm -hmm. now you all are pacific northwest people but for but for this uh just but for the pregnancy and for the delivery you actually moved right can you talk a little bit about that yeah, yeah. so you know after we found out that stephanie was pregnant with quintuplets i did what i do when I don't know how to do something. I got on YouTube and I uh, searched quintuplets and I found a family that had quintuplets as well. And I kind of just started from the beginning, looked at their original videos and they talked about this doctor down in Phoenix. Uh, his name is Dr. John Elliott and how he, he basically has the record for most quintuplet uh, deliveries. And in fact, I think we were his 20, 25th, uh, set of quintuplets that he delivered. Wow. He's delivered like 120 sets of quadruplets. Probably way more than that now. Yeah. Honestly. So he's the expert in this. And I think at first we were unsure if we'd actually move down, but it it didn't take long before mm -hmm. we were like, yeah, we're going to, this is going to require basically our 100% effort. And so, yeah, we made the choice to move down to Phoenix. And um, we moved down when you were 16 weeks. Yeah. Pregnant. Yep. Steph was 16 weeks pregnant. And honestly, I Phoenix is a lot different area than where we are right now, but I really enjoyed it because I mm -hmm. love the sun. And mm -hmm. so it was nice kind of leaving here uh, during the winter season. And um, it was really cool to go to a place, just the two of us, yeah. I think, and just spend yeah. a lot of time together before this craziness, this crazy season of our life started. So we loved it. Yeah. Um, we 
uh, we started going to a church that was like right next to our apartment. Yeah, like a minute away. Um, everyone there was amazing. <laughs> Just a super wow. great community that really helped us once the babies yeah. were born. And then we even met another family at the church that had quadruplets like four months prior to. That went to the same doctor. That went to the oh. same doctor. And now so, they're like really close friends of ours. Yeah. So it was all, um, again, just kind of God's hand at work and giving us, um, I, I think once I saw them with the quadruplets, I mean, I, I always felt like we could do this, but really once I saw them, it was a tangible real life example. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, we can do this. And she was even, yeah. Stephanie's five foot two. Yeah, so I'm, she's not, not very big. <laughs> the tallest person. And this mom was about an five inch. Foot. She was five foot. She's two inches yeah. shorter than Stephanie. So I was like, Okay, they did yeah. it. We can do this. Yeah. And um and she made it to 34 weeks. So yeah. I was like, wow. Okay, I got this. <laughs> yeah, but Phoenix is great. The heat was a little challenging uh in the middle of July, but overall I'm just glad I wasn't pregnant in July. That was <laughs> right. what was nice. Yeah. That would have been rough. Yeah. That would have been rough. So then you guys went how how long have you been back back in your regular in your regular um world? When when did you move um, back from Phoenix? We came back at the end of August of 2020. Okay. Yeah. So how many months is that? Almost six months. Oh wow. Yeah. That's almost been six months. It feels months. like yesterday, but also five years ago. It's yeah. a it's a weird <laughs> time. Time. Is, time is weird these days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's actually uh that's a that's a great segue because I know I was I was talking with my my wife and, and we have we have 10 kids and so so life is busy, but but never have we had any multiples and in multiple just even having twins sounds like just insanely hard. So five, five is just like, it's, it's just, those are just funny numbers to us. We can't, you can't even wrap our mind around it, but I know she was really wanting to know, like, what is it, what's a typical day look like for you? Um, does it change much or is it pretty much the same? And you're just kind of growing and developing with your kids. It is pretty much the same. <laughs> <laughs> now, I will say they are starting to kind of like move around and stuff. So it, it is starting to, get a little bit different here and there but it's pretty much the same um i get up and i wake them up and i feed them and we play around for a little bit change diapers i clean bottles and then i start prepping for some dinner and then i do it all over again <laughs> and it kind of does that until we put them to bed at night and um yeah, they, and they, they do sleep the whole night through. So that is really nice. Amazing. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Um, and they were really, they're really good sleepers. Yeah. So I would just to add to that, that, I mean, I think it's a lot more simple than people mm -hmm. would actually think it is. Like, it's not just madness. Um, mm -hmm. And actually, meeting that quadruplet family, we went over to their house for dinner probably two or three times, and we saw like, it doesn't have to be madness. It's yeah. just how you approach it. And sure. um, they also had three other kids as well. Th yeah, so it had, wasn't just the quads. Yeah. They had, they had three other kids and they had twins. Yeah. Wow. And one single, but um, wow. yeah, I think it's, it's been a lot more simple than I think people would think it is. It is the same thing every day. The only like change in our schedule is Sundays with church basically, <laughs> yeah. but we're like, what's the weekend? What does that even mean for us anymore? Um, or if we have people over, if stuff, we have people but... over, but, and then another thing is we really, we've kind of played around with their schedule a lot on like best times to feed them. And um, we've landed on to get enough calories in for the babies. Like we also do a dream feed at night. And mm -hmm. um, that's when we to talk specifically about the formula. That's when we do the once a days, the vitamins and um, yeah, it works really well. Yeah. And they're, um, and it doesn't feel so back to back <clears throat> for us. Cause they are able to, we're able to spread out. Out more. it's, it's difficult in the sense that we have so many, mm -hmm. but um, they're very easy babies. Yeah. They're they're great, so yeah. it's um, it's not been too bad. Yeah. If if you guys get a chance to head over to the to the Friels website or to their YouTube channel, they've got great great pictures, uh, great videos of their kids, and um, the yeah, they're they seem like such good natured, sweet kids. Mm -hmm. They really, it seems amazing. My, my wife and I used to talk about when our kids were all little and that kind of, that life was like a shampoo bottle. It was wash, rinse, repeat. That was like, it was always <laughs> the same. <laughs> yeah. Yep. The shampoo bottle days, but uh, well, that's, that's great. I mean, if, if uh, you'd said something, um, Graham, in your Christmas letter about just how the, uh, keeping these, keeping these kids alive every day, and you know, getting them through another day, like that's a, that is a huge 
That is a huge, noble, and glorious uh, achievement every day. And so you, really, you can go to sleep and sleep the sleep the sleep of the just because of just simply doing that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's, that's wonderful. Um, okay, great. Well, uh, another another question I was just kind of hoping to, and we're going to get into the goat milk formula uh, because that that is definitely a, a, a good thing for a lot of our listeners are going to be interested to hear how exactly mm -hmm. that formula works with multiples because we have lots of people that use use this formula in multiples because that's one of the most common reasons why you know you can't end up. Um, uh, feeding, uh, nursing the baby is if you just have too many, but before mm -hmm. we get to that, just a couple of, a couple other questions I wanted to know is, is just what, what role has your local community played in your life? Like obviously raising children is not something that you do, um, entirely isolated by yourself. Obviously the, 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 the tremendous responsibility relies on your shoulders, but, but what role has your community played in the life of parent in your life of parenting? Well, even when we first kind of started fertility treatments, like mm -hmm. we had so many people just like kind of in our corner with us and praying for us and stuff. Um, and then just a part of the entire journey, which has been mm -hmm. really amazing. Um, and then I just keep, I just think about before we left for Phoenix, it was literally the weekend before we left for Phoenix. Um, we did like a baby shower um, and we had so many people come out and mm -hmm. we took a picture we did it at our church and they covered, we covered the, you the can, entire you can, stage. You can't see the stage anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's just wow. so many people. Um, and I feel like that's just like, that's such a good picture of what you're asking. Yeah. <laughs> We've had so many people, yeah. like everybody's always wanting to reach out. And sometimes we have too many people where we're like, I actually don't know if I need your help. <laughs> no offense, but I need, I don't yeah. need it right now because we have so many people. Um, yeah. When we first came back, um, yeah, we had, just so many people, even in Phoenix, the mm -hmm. church there um, really helped us then too. Yeah, I would just say we kind of our joke has been we had too many people praying for us to mm -hmm. have because that's how we ended up with five. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, we have when we found out about the five, I think a lot of people would freak out. And uh, I was definitely scared, definitely nervous, but specifically only nervous in the fact that I was scared for Stephanie and I was scared for my unborn children. I knew if we could get them here, we were going to be okay mm -hmm. because we both have very good families on both mm -hmm. sides. My family and her family are great people. And we have just an awesome community, the church that we're at. Mm -hmm. And so I never doubted how we're going to take care of them. Um, it may not be how I want to do, mm -hmm. always wanted to do it. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, in so many ways, uh, financially, people have just helped mm -hmm. us out, which is like taking the burden of working so much away from me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we we right now we actually live at Stephanie's parents' house. Um, they kind of split their time here, and they have other property out of state. Mm -hmm. But that's helped the burden of a high rent payment or a high mortgage payment, and um, also there are extra hands mm -hmm. when we need them when they're mm -hmm. in town, <clears throat> and then just the countless people that made us, you know, I think you always hear like people get meals for like a week after the baby is born when we got it for so long. We probably had I think over a hundred dinners cooked for us. We, between, got, we got back in the end of August and I think we had meals until November and well, just in Phoenix in, too, in Washington. But then yeah, yeah. In Phoenix, we had it I think, the whole time after they were born. Um, yeah. So the church in Phoenix um, just, uh, Whitten Avenue Bible Church. They were amazing. Okay. And um, I, it was amazing. I always, uh, the last time that we were there, um, I got up and I just said, I feel like we didn't deserve any of this. Yet the church just like poured into us like crazy. And I was like, perfect example of the gospel. I'm not, mm -hmm. <laughs> I know this is about formula, but I, I know you stand on Christian beliefs. And mm -hmm. man, it was just like the perfect example of like, we didn't deserve it. God gave to us and he supported us. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just I'm long winded, but um, <laughs> we we've always had the support we need, mm -hmm. um, which has been phenomenal. And I've never doubted for one moment how we're going to do mm -hmm. this because of that, which has been awesome. Yeah. One of the things I seem to hear in both in both of you uh, in both of your voices is just a lot of gratitude and mm -hmm. It seems like as a truth, 
um, that gratitude is the thing, you know, if you're thankful to God for his uh, providence, it's the thing that allows you to really do anything, right? If you can, if you can remain thankful in the moment um, for what he has given you, regardless of whether it's a, it's a hard providence or an easy providence, um, whether it's ice cream or sickness, if you can always remain thankful in those kinds of things, that is the thing that uh, oftentimes will help uh, just carry you through. Um, and so it seems like good community is, is like vital for helping us to remain thankful, to, to keep mm-hmm. our proper perspective, because you have all these people that are encouraging you towards look at, look at how good actually things are. Um, yeah. because here's a meal and, and, and God is good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so, um, what are some Last question, then we'll get into the goat milk formula. What are some truths that you guys um, are reminding yourselves of, reminding each other of, that kind of carry you day to day? I feel like this is so cliche, but like, <laughs> I feel like when things do get kind of hard, it is just a season. Like, that's mm. such a Christian answer, I feel <laughs> like, but like, <laughs> just in a season. But it is like, I, it's also tough because it's like, they're, they are pretty easy babies. Um, but like, you know, you have those moments where things are a little chaotic and things can be kind of stressful and mm-hmm. just kind of have to be like, okay, this isn't how it's going to be forever. Mm-hmm. And I, yeah, I feel like that's, yeah. I mean, there's so many ways to answer this. Yeah. I would say um, <clears throat> we like when we first started dating Stephanie and I, we love kids. Like we, we absolutely love children. So we always knew we wanted a big family and, um, you got it. Yeah, we did. And there was, there was a time where we thought we may not even have kids. Um, so to go from feeling like that to where we are now, um, despite how, you know, challenging it can be right now, Mm -hmm. like at the end of the day, we're just thankful that we have been blessed with these kids and, I think one of the things, um, so very immediate is like, just to remind ourselves that God is with us. Um, yeah. and he wouldn't give us something that we ultimately can't handle. So I like, remember that. Um, I also just think like, remind myself, I can't, you know, God trusts us with five kids. Mm-hmm. I think that's, I, sometimes I'm like, I don't know why, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, I, he did. And, um, it's, it's a cool responsibility mm. to yeah. take on and um, remind myself of, and it's motivating in a sense. And um, I know that despite how challenging this can be um, compared to a normal, I, I don't want to even just say normal, but raising one at a time, mm-hmm. I know it's going to be so rewarding uh, long-term um, just even seeing how the babies are interacting with each other now, mm-hmm. like, I just can't wait for two years from now when they're all giggling and they're really good friends with each other. And I know it's going to be just a super exciting life. Um, and yeah, we're thankful in that regard. And, um, you hinted at it earlier. Like I mentioned, you know, we just kept five babies alive and how in Mm -hmm. a sense, like that's awesome. A lot of days I go to bed and I'm like, man, I didn't get done, you know, X, Y, and Z of Mm -hmm. what I was trying to get done. But just reminding myself, like, hey, if all we do this first year is raise these children to where they're healthy, one-year-olds, like, that's a that's a win. That's mm-hmm. a big win. And, um, yeah, I hope that answers. Yeah. No, that, that, that's fantastic. It sounds like you guys really have a, a great head on your shoulders for that. And I know, I know sometimes there can be, like, a, a, you can get – parents can get kind of sentimental about their kids. Like, oh, I don't want them to grow up too fast. And, and <laughs> all I can say is that the, it just gets better. So like you bring them mm-hmm. home and they're newborns and, and they're just so precious and wonderful. But then they, just every stage that they move into, at least what I found is like, this is so much cooler than, than what it was. And I loved what it was, mm-hmm. but I don't want to go back either. Um, and so I think you guys will find that these, these kids are just, they just get more and more fun as the days go on. But, um, one last question on the kids, uh, what, uh, are you seeing a clear personality range between the five yet? <laughs> yes. I would say they're all very, very different. <laughs> you should just share it real quick and share their names. I'm sure people, okay, but, I'll, yeah. I'll go in birth order. Um, so it's really funny because 
Adeline, I feel like she kind of started off as kind of like the easiest, quiet, just mm -hmm. just like chill. And now she's like just like always making noises and like just very almost rambunctious in a way, it feels like. And she does this little nose scrunch when she smiles and it's so cute. Um Elion is a talker. So she just will babble away and she's like so smiley and just like you can always you you make eye contact with her and she's like yeah yeah <laughs> so excited um Linnea is our curious one she's always kind of like looking around just taking it all in but the she's quiet one too but she's gotten a little bit more talkative yeah. Yeah. and get a little more personality it's kind of like <sighs> um Fisher is our most chill he is I don't really see him being a rambunctious boy honestly <laughs> Um, and our only boy. And our only boy. And mm. yeah, I he's he seems like he's got a lot of my personality, which is he's got a lot of emotional attachment too. So if you show him attention, and as soon as you look <laughs> away, uh, he is. He goes, oh. uh. <laughs> yeah. um, and then Harper is our mover, mm. and she just is kind of go go go, but she's also probably she's one of the silliest at this point. Now, ben too. loves to snuggle. And she loves to snuggle. Yeah. Yes. Her and Fisher are probably the most snuggly. Yeah. I would yeah. say. Yeah. So they're not identical. Yeah. Um, and I'm kind of glad that it's mm -hmm. that way. So they're all just their mm -hmm. own individual super different person. So mm. yeah. 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 Well, they'll they'll always be, you know, people who know you'll will see your kids and they'll be like, Oh, yeah, that that's a free I can tell. And and they'll all <laughs> kind of seem the same to other people, but to parents, it's like you know your yeah. kids so well that they're like so different. They're just all night and yeah. day from each other. And God's uh, amazingly creative when it comes to personalities and children. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. Well, thank you guys for sharing all that with us. Um, I would love to hear a little bit more about um, your uh, just the things that you guys have done in, as it relates to feeding these <laughs> these little hunger mongers. Um, if you're <laughs> if you're listening in right now, um, whether you're on the crowdcast or if you're on the Facebook uh, group, feel free to uh, add your questions to the chat box uh, and and um, any anything formula related, uh, we can we can. We can try and stump stump the freels with uh, some hard questions, but uh, yeah. but yeah, we would love to love to hear a little bit more about uh, how how it goes feeding them. Um, so let's just start off with uh, when they were in. Well, first of all, uh, are they they're they're still all on the formula? Is that is that true? The goat milk formula. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when when did they actually go on to the formula? When did you actually start feeding them that? I, I assume you didn't do that in the NICU. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. They. It was pretty shortly after they came home. Okay. Um, well, I, I think it is also important to say they only had breast milk for their first 50 something days of wow. life. It was like the last week before they came home that they started going on formula. Stephanie was pumping around the clock. And so she'd pump all day. We bring. They also them. didn't eat as much then. That's true. I mean, they were tiny little babies, but Stephanie would come in with her breast milk and they have like, they call literally, it's called a breast milk bank. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you make your deposit and um, <laughs> you know, every so often they'd kind of give us an update of like, we're starting to run out of breast milk. The supplies at going. one point they told me not to bring in so much. Yeah, that's true too. And I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but they were on breast milk, like fully on breast milk until probably I have to do it 35 weeks corrected age. Yeah. I think. Um, and then anyways, once they ran out of breast milk, uh, they got put on uh, a formula called NeoSure, which is basically the standard mm -hmm. for preemies and mm -hmm. um, claiming that um, it has all the like nutrients and calories needed for preemie babies to catch up. And um, it was interesting. This is like a little too much information, but I, I find it very interesting. All their poops when they were on breast milk looked very normal. It looked mm -hmm. like very yellowy, very seedy, mm -hmm. typical. typical newborn baby. And then as soon as they got put on Neosure, it was. They got constipated and mm -hmm. it changed. It was Drastic. totally different. And um, so kind of that paired with just um, really over the past couple of years, um, I think you, Stephanie's always been a little bit more in the uh, more natural, more natural, yeah. more natural approach. I grew up kind of in a different mindset and. 
really just the past couple of years kind of started to question things. What we're told is healthy for us, what's not healthy for us. And um, I think when I got pregnant, things really changed. Yeah, things really changed. Something about becoming a dad. <laughs> yeah. So I think I always knew, well, one, once we knew we had, we we're going to have five, we knew that they'd have to have formula. And I think I was like, I don't want to just do the cheapest formula. I want to make sure like we're giving these babies good nutrition and that's what's going to help them grow. And so, man, I think your question was just how, to, when did they start on the goat milk? <laughs> I, I guess I'll answer that first, very quickly after coming home, after being discharged. Yeah. When they're in the NICU, even though I, I kind of disagreed with some things, I didn't really want to ruffle feathers. I was sure. okay with just going with protocol, but they got on the formula, the goat milk formula very soon after being right. discharged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, do you guys remember what the transition for them was like uh, going from, so I guess there was a lot of transitions going on from not just moving and being discharged and moving from breast milk to NeoSure to the goat milk formula. I know we have a lot of parents that they, you know, there's the transition period when you get them from breast milk to the goat milk formula or from commercial formula to the goat milk formula. What, what was the transition like for you guys? Right. Um, so our very first one to get discharged was Eliana mm -hmm. and, um, she, they sent us home with NeoSure and that night, um, kind of how we handled the first few months was I stayed up all night and then Stephanie took the days. So, um, that night Eliana couldn't sleep. Mm -hmm. She was crying the whole night. She was very constipated, really gassy. Mm -hmm. And so I, I pretty much was like, that was like when you started. Researching. I, I was like, this does not seem like it's going to be a good option. So we immediately switched to a formula called Bobby, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was better. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's much better ingredients than what NeoSure was. And then we switched to Bobby and that night was like night and day difference totally different. of how she slept. No whining. And then by the time we had goat milk formula, I mean, there was no gassiness. Mm -hmm. Um they're again, their, their poops started to look way more yep. normal. And, um, yeah, I, I played like the transition. There was nothing difficult about it in yeah. terms of how the babies reacted. Yeah. yeah. I thought like they did really well, really well. Yeah. And so Stephanie, you were saying the, the adjusted age, cause I, I know it gets a little confusing. Like what was their actual age is when they actually started the formula. Do you, do you, re, you said their adjusted age was like 30, 35, not 35, 35 weeks, 35 weeks. 35. Okay. So like they like w it would be like pregnancy basically. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, gotcha. That was when they kind of started coming home. Yeah. And um, roughly yeah. about two to three months old. Yeah. Is when they yeah. started having okay. it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And we we like to tell parents, you know, if you're in the NICU, they're not going to like the homemade the homemade formula. Don't fight that battle. They're, um, they're the, the hospital is is not interested in in um in that. And so, you know, that's why, that's why, you know, a lot of these formulas, they might not be like ideal for baby, like the NeoSure, but we can be thankful that they exist so that baby can still eat in the hospital and the hospitals can kind of go along with it. Um, you know, for most, for most healthcare uh, professionals, they've never heard of goat milk formula and they probably just think goat milk. And, and of course mm -hmm. they're told, they're told in that one hour of nutrition class that they took in medical school not to feed goat milk to babies. And so, so they of course will, is, are going to reject it. So we have a whole way we walk uh, parents through, you know, talking with and educating your own doctor as to what this is and what it's not. But, mm -hmm. but it was really wise that you didn't like try to put up a fight with the NICU folks about that because they're, I mean, the, the, those babies are so, so at risk, they're not going to take any chances that they feel like are unnecessary. So, yeah, you know, that's, that makes a lot of sense. So, so about two or three months, they're, they're transitioning to goat milk formula. They are, um, uh, doing well on it. Um, however, obviously what, what you, um, we tell parents, you know, if you're moving to the goat milk formula, you got to realize that, that it's going to be more work because you're getting better ingredients, but it's definitely not as convenient. Now times that by five, <laughs> because you guys got to make five, five times as much as anyone uh, as a, as a parent of a single, um, how have you guys been, a been able to manage the increased work of, um, making this formula? Cause it is not as convenient. 
Yeah. Graham decided to grab a prop, our prop that we utilized. Well, first off, before we, okay, okay, yeah, okay. I got excited. <laughs> we, uh, we did start, we did the wet recipe at sure. first oh, yeah. and that quickly just didn't, it was, that one was a lot of work and, um, we got a big gallon size. blender. Yeah. I got a massive and, blender like, too. And <laughs> so we did soon transition into yeah. the dry mix yeah. formula yes. and, um, we, I was kind of at first making it like every couple of days is what I was doing. Yeah, doing one, right? batch at a time. one batch at a time. And then it turned into, I'll make four big back batches every week. Every week. And then this is what we, um, <laughs> I don't know. Nice. If you can see. <laughs> the size, you can't even tell how big it is in, yeah. the, in the video though. It's, it is massive. And you right. can do, you do all four batches in that bowl. It's huge. Wow. So we, a game changer. we took the, um, you know, you get the card when you order the formula and the dry mix recipe, the one that's like the biggest batch that you can make that's on the recipe card. I take that and I multiply it by four. So I, I make just a massive batch at one time now. And that lasts us and about. And we put them in tubs. Put them in tubs. Yeah. We take the, um, the lactose tub. tub. Mm -hmm. That's it. Oh yeah. And I put I put the formula in that or use those. Great. And um, yeah, so we, we basically fill up four of those lactose tubs and yeah. uh, it lasts us a whole week. So nice. it's really, it takes me now that I have the big bowl, it might take me 30 to 45 minutes to make yeah. enough. I don't think it takes that long. No, to make enough formula right. for the week. So it's like, you're going to spend that much time just driving to the store to buy formula. Right. So it's yep. like, it's no extra time. Yeah. In fact, it's, probably you know, less time and you enjoy and it. i love it it's oh, fun like i it. i every time it's made i'm like this smells kind of good like i, I don't know like, you also use a hand mixer and that helps yes mix yeah it up, yeah so right sure. um yeah it's i i think people think that it's going to be really difficult it's not mm -hmm. i do think the dry mix formula is it's way less time consuming yeah than the, um the wet yeah and then once you make formula you just make it like you would regular we do have a tea kettle that we're able to heat up the water to like 113 degrees. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we just put the formula in their bottle, add the water, shake it up, and it's pretty much ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah once once you put together the, the ingredients in the dry mix, then at that point it pretty much just becomes like what you'd buy at a at a at a uh, any grocery store or a natural health food store. It's basically formula at that point. So the dry mix is really a game changer for most people. Uh, we have some some of our uh, some some people who really prefer making the wet than making big batches of the wet ingredients. Um, but we always encourage people to go the dry mix route because it's so much easier. Um, and you know, just you're already a new parent. You don't need the extra. You don't need to do things harder than they already are going to be. So, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm glad you guys are finding the the dry mix to, to be working well. And uh, yeah. and it is actually it's amazing if you if you're watching this for the first time and and you're not real familiar with formula, it, it's amazing how much better tasting the, the goat milk formula is over like the commercial formulas. I, re mm -hmm. I remember when, uh, before we created the formula, uh, our, uh, our daughter, Liesl, who had to be on formula, it was like, I would taste it and it would just taste awful. It taste, it tasted like metallic. And I don't exactly know what it was all the, all the things that were giving it the bad flavor, but I was, but I was like, no wonder you don't want to drink this baby. Um, but the goat milk formula really, uh, it, it tastes good. Um, what, what have been some, you had already mentioned, like you, you save the once a days for like one particular time during the day. Um, for those who don't know, once a days are the ingredients that you don't need in every bottle, things like the multivitamin, um, that kind of thing. So, so that sounds like a, like walk us through, how do you guys handle the once a days? For the for for the formula. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that that's your room right there. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, actually I feel like it's important to say this too before I dive right into that. We not our very last feed, but the feed before that we call it family time. It's like our dinner mm -hmm. time. Stephanie does always breastfeed one, one baby. Okay. During the feed. And um we also she's still pumping, so one of our five feeds, all of them are getting a bottle of breast milk too. Oh, nice. So we are still trying to give them nutrients through that. And yeah, I know that you guys are a huge fan of breast milk too, as long as oh, yeah, yeah. it's like nothing beats it. But um, the once a days that you guys um, recommend or offer 
are have been great too. So <clears throat> I would say the ones a days have been the most challenging part mm -hmm. of yep. the formula is like learning how to do it because clogging in the nipples yep. is a challenge. Um, for a time, what we did do was we thickened them pretty heavily, the feeds. And I'm not a doctor. I'm not saying like I, I know what's best, but we thickened it quite a bit and we did a cross cut nipple and they seem to be able to actually take it in pretty well okay. with that. There's no clogging, but we also just started to think, why are we, we probably shouldn't thicken them this much. Mm -hmm. The reason we even knew about thickening was because a couple of our babies had swallowing issues. So we had to thicken their feeds mm -hmm. no matter what. Gotcha. Um, but now how we handle it is we do the once a days for the dream feed. So about 10 30 at night and how I do it is I heat up the water to about 142 degrees and we mix up the formula, the probiotic, the multivitamin, everything in it, everything in it mix it really well, put it in their bottles. And then we fill in, all I do is add three ounces of really hot water. So the 142 degree water Yep. and I shut that up really hard. And then I add in um, more or less just room temperature water. It's a little bit colder than that fill it up to the five ounce mark yep. and shake it really well. And it comes out, you know, test on your wrist and it comes out as a really good temperature. We use size four nipples for that, for the, okay. um, for the once a day. And it seems to be working yep. really well. Like we're not getting um, clogs anymore and um, the babies take it really well. It's not like they don't take it because mm -hmm. it's a little bit different and it's working, working great. Yeah. Um, do you yeah. guys use the DHA? We do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we use the okay. DHA. We actually also do an iron supplement too, um, okay. just because uh, we were recommended. We were recommended polyvisol um, when they first came home. Yeah. When they first came home, we use a little bit. Uh, we use Novaferum, and that's just because they they said because the babies are separated from the placenta so early on. Okay. They kind of want us to have a little extra iron in their diet until they're one year old. So gotcha. Yeah. yeah. The, when you have the DHA, because that's the only ingredient in the formula that actually doesn't taste good um, mm -hmm. or th that has a distinct fish flavor. <laughs> Does yeah. that do, do they have any problems when when you use the DHA? Okay. Nope. Doesn't seem like it. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> yeah, they'll take it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, because anytime baby's rejecting things, we always we always tell parents like, hey, you know, pull out the DHA. They probably are. They're probably rejecting it from because of that, because that does not. Fish oil just does, doesn't yeah. taste good. It's good for them, but it doesn't taste good. So, um, you touched on a really interesting point too with the with the additional iron. Um, mm -hmm. Iron needs for for infants. Just for anyone who's listening, they're they're very strange because for the in a normal in a normal pregnancy where baby is going full term, um, they actually come with a you know onboard iron um, already in their system, and so for the first six months they barely they barely need any dietary iron at all. Uh, this is again, full gestation normal. Um, and then after from like six months to 12 months, then they need, they, they need uh, much more iron supplementation. And so for you guys, you have to do additional iron, uh, iron supplementation because since they weren't, um, they, they basically, they didn't get their gas tank filled up with iron before they were born. And so that mm -hmm. totally makes sense. Um, that's great. Um, I got a question from one of our uh, listeners here. Renee asks, um, how did you, uh, how'd you guys come about finding the goat milk formula and what, what made you guys decide to make the switch? Yeah. So I hinted at it earlier, I think because we always knew we'd be doing formula. Mm -hmm. Um, I, once Stephanie was pregnant, started doing some research on the best formulas. I think I just like search organic formula. Mm -hmm. That's if, and if you search that today, you probably will come across Bobby. I would mm -hmm. say they put a lot of. Um, money in their marketing. And I think we were set on using Bobby. Mm -hmm. And uh, one night I was just like doom scrolling on Facebook and came across a Bobby Facebook ad. And I started reading in the comments of, I just wish you wouldn't use seed oils in it. Mm -hmm. And then, so that'll send you down the rabbit hole. <laughs> the rabbit hole, oils. exactly. <laughs> and so I was like, well, man, maybe we shouldn't use Bobby then. Maybe let's find something else. And I think another comment on that ad specifically was um, some, talking about goat milk. It, it didn't. It wasn't talking about Mount Capra specifically, but goat milk. And at the same time, I was kind of going through this phase of like, 
trying to DIY everything, like making my own sunscreen. I've really turned into like a, <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, um, so I, I think I literally just Googled one night DIY goat milk formula. And okay. I think you guys were number one at the top on Google. Yeah. And I, I was you, like, I think you ordered something like that night. Yeah, I was like, this is pretty cool. You told and, me in the morning. <laughs> and you were like, sounds good. Sounds good to me. And um, yeah, I think, and so I, I ordered it and honestly like what you're talking about the smells that was like the biggest thing i noticed like and again we were using the wet recipe but i would make it and i'd be like this smells good like i think mm -hmm. i would drink this um right whereas like you mix up neo sure smell terrible so and then bobby didn't smell it smelled horrible like it just smelled like formula and then if you let it sit for like a day it just smells terrible so right. i was like yeah let's try something different and um Kind of our biggest con only concern was um, because they're premies, you know, you're trying to catch them up on weight. So you fortify everything. Yep. And that's, you know, sure is already fortified. It comes fortified. Bobby, you can fortify it. Yep. And then, um, but good news is that you can fortify Mount Capra. I mean, I know you guys asked for a doctor's note. So, yep. uh, and I'm happy to talk about that too, what it's been like talking about the formula with pediatricians, but yeah, I just yes. told her doctor, I said, we're using this and we needed a note. And he didn't, he was like, yeah, yeah. happy to do that. Yeah. So we're able to figure out how to fortify this. And um, cool. Yeah. Did you guys, I, I forget, did you guys use like the 22 calories uh, or the 24 calorie recipe? Which one did you guys fortify? 24. 24. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, just in case anyone listening doesn't know, uh, the, the, the way formula is supposed to be uh, normally is 20 calories or excuse me, 100, um, 20 calories per ounce, basically. So every 100 cal or every five ounce bottle should be a hundred calories. Mm -hmm. um, Mount Capra produces several different fortified formulas, um, 22 calorie, 24 calorie, even a 30 calorie per ounce mm -hmm. uh, recipe. But we do ask for doctor's notes on that because sometimes, sometimes that desire to DIY everything, people think they need to fortify when, when they actually don't. And, yeah. um, and so the, the doctor's note is not like something that all of a sudden makes everything okay. It just means that they had to go through at least one more step of someone else looking at what their plan was before, before yeah. we, we pass that out. So, um, but yeah, what has it been? What, what, what have those conversations been like with your doctor? Because I would imagine, I would imagine, you know, pediatricians are going to be pretty uptight about, uh, about higher risk babies like this or maybe I not. Like at first, well, I feel like at first the, that our first pediatrician that was actually in Phoenix, um, he was mainly concerned because we didn't have the fortified mm -hmm. recipe. And so he, he wasn't super pushy about staying on new sure, but we told, and we told him how well Eliana was doing on it. Yeah. Told him the, you know, didn't sleep and now sleeping great. And he yeah. was like, he's like, yeah. great. He's like, I, I was just concerned about her, her <clears throat> weight and gaining weight. So make gotcha. sure you get that fortified. And that was when we, we got the note. And, um, and then our other pediatrician here, really, I feel like everybody's been pretty. Yeah, I mean, I think so. We we we've gone to two, and then if you're confused on, we we're talking about multiple pediatricians. We saw a pediatrician in Phoenix while we were still there, mm -hmm. um, and then we went to another pediatrician here when we mm -hmm. first moved, and um, she was great. Yeah, she didn't really like say like why are you on this one? She, mm -hmm. I think she was interested. I think we were right. a little different. Um, but I think she, I mean, her words, not ours were, these are some of the healthiest babies, not quintuplets, not freemies. Mm -hmm. not freemies. These are some babies. of the healthiest babies that I've ever seen. And to mention that they're quintuplets and they're born at 27 weeks in two days gestation. I think she was like, I can't argue with yeah. what they're being fed then. And then and um, she saw one of their poops. Yeah, I saw one of the poops. She was, really and she was like, wow, that's amazing. So yep. the proof is in the poop. And then, yeah. <laughs> the proof is in the, And then we actually, we, we have since switched pediatricians again. And um, he is a, a naturopath. And um, he actually knows about Matt Capra. He was like, yeah, yeah. he's like, oh, yeah, I've, I've heard of that. It's, I've heard good things. So, um and I think just like this is a whole nother conversation at the end of the day, you're the parent and yep. you know what's best mm -hmm. for your child. Um, and I, I think 
I, it's not that there's a time and a place for doctors to speak into what they recommend. Like when the babies were in the NICU, I was pretty much fully on board with whatever they recommended. But, you know, once they came home, they're, they're our children. And, um, we read what's in the ingredients of other formulas and just not too thrilled about it and read what's in this. And it's when you can't understand or pronounce a word that's in your baby's formula ingredient, you might raise your eyebrows a little bit. Right. And, um, I, I felt comfortable with making this decision and, um, I knew that I had my baby's best intentions at heart. So yeah at the end of the day you just have to be confident in what your what choices you're making for your child and be okay with some people raising eyebrows at you sure so yeah yeah absolutely that's great yeah no well well said and you know the responsibility of parents is paramount and everybody else just exists to support to support parents in the in the in the job that they've been given so and and i would be in the exact same position if i was in the NICU. i'd i'd be like yeah let's just keep my babies as healthy as you can and and then, um, yeah, so well done. Um, let's see. Renee says, you guys are doing great. I was two pounds when I was born and out of the hospital wow. after one month. I'm 37 now. So, so there you wow. go. Two, uh, two pound baby so. is 37 years old. Um, and then uh, Blanca Mendoza says, um, I heard about Mount Capra from this awesome couple. So, oh, wow. so uh, Blanca, if you're watching, go ahead and throw your uh, question. You said, where can I send a question? Throw it in the comment box on Facebook. We'll see it. Um, I wanted to ask you guys, cause we're coming up on the hour here. Um, uh, two things. Let's get the, let's get the most important one out of the way. Uh, how can people learn more about your family? Like, uh, where, where should people go? Well, we have a YouTube, mm -hmm. um, it's just, we are the frills. We have an Instagram page. It's also, we are the frills. Yeah. <laughs> we have a Facebook page and it's also, we are, we are the frills. We, we um, have a website, but there's not really anything yeah, on it. We, I would say we haven't been like the overly active online um, family. What have you guys been doing? Come on. <laughs> been a little busy. Five babies alive. Part of our goal this year is to actually, you know, produce more content. And it will be about the babies, but I think there'll be more stuff in there too, just about us yeah. learning how to become parents. And um, sure. Uh, I was telling uh, you right before we started, we are as crazy as this sounds. We're going to be moving into a fifth wheel and traveling around the country. Oh, you put that out there. Yeah, we yeah, haven't told anybody putting, that yeah. yet. <laughs> and uh, so we're going to kind of document what that journey is like. It is a very big fifth wheel, so yeah. there is room for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm just trying to think. Where do you put all the car seats that you are pulling this fifth fifth wheel with? <laughs> We, we got to travel in two separate vehicles. That's yeah, the hardest part that's about nice it. Part. So, so we have a 15 passenger van and then okay. I'll be pulling the vehicle in yeah. a truck. So. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So 15 yeah. passenger van. Yep. Just, just go from, uh, go from the little, uh, you know, Honda Accord right into the 15 passenger van. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, okay, perfect. So yeah, uh, search. So YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, we are the Freels. That's the uh, uh, keep. Yeah. And I would, I would encourage anyone listening there, just keep an eye on this family because they've got a lot of, they got a lot of uh, really good stuff that they're, that God's teaching them. Uh, they're going to be sharing with, mm -hmm. with the rest of us on, you know, just how to, uh, how to remain thankful in the midst of uh, a life filled with um, mm -hmm. all kinds of unexpected joys. And that's really my last mm -hmm. question for you guys is, um, what are some of the greatest joys that you guys have found as parents, um, both expected and maybe even some unexpected joys? Ooh. <laughs> um, well, I feel like when you've always wanted to become a parent, when you do become a parent, I feel like that in itself mm -hmm. is like unexplainable joy, I guess. But man, when all of them are laughing and smiling at you, it's just you can't even express like how fun that is mm -hmm. and like so cool and they like you can just tell they like they're so young still but they you can tell they like love you mm -hmm. and like it's yeah it's just it's amazing i i don't which like i feel like i kind of expected that but you also just don't understand it until you're in it um so yeah i feel like i don't know if there's really an unexpected no, you go ahead. You go ahead and say yours first then. Yeah, unexpected is hard because I feel like a lot of the stuff we kind of anticipated. Well, I mean, 
Yeah. Also, the fact that we have five. Yeah. This is our first go round. Yeah, it was it was so unexpected to have five at one time. So uh, it's like we don't really have anything to compare it to. So we can't be like, oh, I didn't think this was going to happen with five. You know what I mean? So. Sure. I, I'm yeah. just to hit off what Stephanie said though. I mean, it's it's amazing when they look at you and they smile and um, they giggle. We have yet to have all five giggle at the, giggle same, at the time. same time. So I'm. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, for me, it's been really cool to see. I mean, I always knew Stephanie was going to be an amazing mom. She's worked with young kids since mm -hmm. you were 16. Middle school. Middle school. Maybe elementary school. And um, so, again, maybe not unexpected, but, like, it, it's been so cool to see the mom that she already is to my children, to our children, and going to see how much more of that develops. And I don't know, for me um, – it has definitely, it just reorients everything in your life mm -hmm. and uh, reprioritizes things. And yeah, you kind of have to, especially when you have five, um, you do let go of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Our social life is not nearly what it used to be. Um, we don't get out much. I always like our gas budget has <laughs> decreased, so decreased much. significantly because we drive like once per week. Um, but it's the small joys of mm. seeing them smile at you. Um, yep. Like when you hold them and they kind of dig their head into your chest and they just want to be close to you, nothing beats it. Mm. Um, and I think today's world really, they don't count kids as blessings as much as I think mm. people should. And um, I think that is really like our goal in doing the YouTube channel Mm -hmm. is yes there is some virality to having quintuplets but we don't really want it to just be about quintuplets we want it to be about we're learning how to become parents and we're we're happy to share with the joy that kids are because kids are a blessing mm -hmm. um they're an amazing they um they build you into the person that you're supposed to become yeah. and um i i feel so blessed to have five kids and um i i wish more people would have kids because mm. uh, they really they change your life for the better and um yeah i hope that answers mm -hmm. your question <laughs> totally totally I, I love it i and you know i i think that it's um it's amazing because you you said that the our, our culture the world doesn't really value kids and in that i totally agree with you i would only i would only say slightly different is that they do value kids and they put a value of a price tag on children. So mm -hmm. if you have a kid, it's going to cost you this much money. So don't have too many. And, you know, every kid's going to cost you a hundred thousand dollars. And, and that's the yeah, completely yeah. the wrong way of valuing kids. Because if yeah. you look at your children as wealth, um, mm -hmm. what every wealth needs investment before it becomes like truly, truly like, um, can actually, you can actually get a return on it, on it. And so mm -hmm. that's what parenting is. It's, it's gardening. You're putting seeds in the ground. You're letting God do the growing, but you are looking to the future for when, when that investment will kind of come into full fruition. And in a sense, yeah. as soon as they're born and you're looking at this little image bearer of God, you're immediately seeing the payoff, but it's just mm -hmm. like, you're just seeing a little glimpse of what the payoff is going to be because these uh, Proverbs talks about, uh, about uh, the, the Proverbs 30, 31 woman, her children rise up and they call her blessed. Um, and so there's this idea that your children are your wealth. And so if you, mm -hmm. if you just look at children as like a price tag of like, it'll cost me this much, you're completely missing the point of them. Your children are, are your inheritance and you give them an inheritance and they give you an inheritance. So, uh, yeah. praise, praise God for that. And I, I love that you guys have that perspective already. That's, that's wonderful. Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, uh, We Are The Freels is the handle to look for on YouTube. Uh, it's the handle to look for on Instagram and on Facebook. If you guys want to know more about the goat milk formula, you can go to goatmilkformula.com. Uh, get all the information there that you need. Um, guys, thank you guys so much for coming on. Uh, love this. Uh, love what you guys are doing and uh, keep up the good work. Don't grow weary in this because there is a great reward for, for your faithfulness. Keep it up. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, we enjoyed yeah. it. Thanks for coming on and uh, God bless you. God bless you, you too. Take care. <laughs>